Thank you for watching. During the course of disease caused by novel coronavirus, there is breakdown of fibrin. It's a protein and this process is known as fibrinolysis and during this fibrinolysis plasmin and enzyme present in the serum it degrades the fibrin monomers and it also degrades cross-linked fibrin polymers and fibrinogen this results in alpha 2 depletion and all this breakdown forms broken degraded products which are called fibrin degradation products now D dimer makes two adjacent fibrin D domains or you can say D dimer joins the two cross linking fibrin domains. So when two domains are released as an intact fragment it is called D dimer. In the course of pandemic it was observed that elevated D dimer was associated with high mortality. That's why anticoagulants are given prophylactically to the seriously ill patients an exact mechanism is still unknown by which we can know that how anticoagulants reduce the level of D-dimer. D-dimer basically tells us about thromboembolism but it is also elevated in inflammation, pregnancy, cancers, mechanical injuries, hepatic dysfunction, cardiovascular diseases, sepsis surgical procedures or trauma due to CPR. The most important things to be kept in mind while drawing blood sample for D-dimer are a needle size of 19 to 22 gauge is necessary. Collection tube should be kept vertical while transporting the sample to the lab. Lab instruments should be maintained properly as blood with high levels of D-dimer may clog the needles and other equipment so cleaning of lab equipment is mandatory. So summary of all this is D-dimer is a fibrin degradation product. It's a small protein fragment joined by two fragments of fibrin protein present in the blood after a blood clot is degraded by the process of fibrinolysis. This test is used to diagnose thrombosis. In COVID-19 illness, D-dimer level will be fourfold elevated and is a strong predictor of COVID-19. Although this test is 95% sensitive, but we should also remember false positive readings in hepatic disease, malignancy and trauma, which I mentioned earlier. Similarly, improper lab techniques may result in false negative readings. An important factor is medication history of the patient. If the patient is already on anticoagulant medication like rivaroxaban, D-dimer levels will not be accurately shown in this case. And the last thing about sample collection is it should be taken in the tube containing anticoagulant in the ratio of 9 to 1. I mean 9 parts of blood and 1 part of anticoagulant. The specimen collection tube should be filled properly, otherwise due to dilutional effects of anticoagulant, false low or high values of D-dimer may distract you. I hope this will be of some help to my fellow physicians. Thank you for watching.